Previously from the Hood Blogger. It came out how it came out, and it was like, damn. Big bro and them getting booked. They booking niggas one by one. They da 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 da. I start peeping how I really got. And it's like, in my head once again, this ain't nothing. Hey, that's why they do that. Nick, Rick, man. It's not weird money. We got it. That's my brain, like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know how serious it was until actually going to, you know, have trials and all that and seeing, like, how serious it was, like. Hey, yo, this is SV Twist, the hood blogger. You already know how I carry it. Shout out to everybody that been rocking with the content. I know I'm running a little late today, but y'all know how life go, but just know I'm gonna continue to push, man. I definitely got the content. Other than that, we gonna get into it. But before I say that, man, if you're new to the channel, hit the sub button. If you're a returning viewer and you ain't sub yet, hit that sub button, man. What's the hold up? Other than that, man, the least y'all can do is hit the like button, man, to keep these videos in the algorithm and all of that. But today, we are gonna get into you know a guy from the city of Philly that um you know I, I heard about him as you know um being like an activist and also you know teaching the community survival tactics and things of that nature and you know I was seeing him a lot throughout the internet and things of that nature and I also noticed that you know he did a lot of time before him coming home and you know it was a couple back and forth online with you know him and some other people and you know one of the situations that i noticed that he had was dealing with was you know with gillian wildlow and he was basically saying that you know at the time that you know he was home and who i'm talking about is at the time when major change was home for that run that he had you know, Philly homicides was like at an all time high. Definitely like in the late 500s, mid to late 500s. And it was a video out there where I saw him saying that he was actually going, I think he was like out Texas or somewhere. You know what I'm saying? He was at some more out of state and he said that he was looking to bump into Charleston White. And at the time of him, you know, allegedly going to bump into Charleston White, he had bumped into Gillian Wildlow. And you know, this was the story that he said when he bumped into Gillian Wildlow. Hey, 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 Ears. I tell you, I ran across Wildlow and Gillian Dutch. I get a call earlier, right? From uh, a few people. They like, yo, your homie's in the mall. So I'm already, we in Lennox Mall. Who I'm looking for is Charleston J. White. So when they tell me that Gilly and Wallow is around, I'm like, damn, where they at? You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna run into them just to have a conversation with them. Let them know what's on my mind, see what's on their mind. About 30 minutes later, I see them, they walking by. I come up, I look, I see Gilly, I see a man, I see Wallow. Yo, what's up? Major change here. Nice to meet you, what's going on? Wallow come, he like, damn, now you just called me. Why you didn't call me? Why you ain't call me? I said, hold on, slow down. Pull your hands down, let's talk like men. First of all, I don't put a man in front of me. If I call you and you don't understand the concerns of my call, then it could be a problem. So it was better to do what I did, knowing that you was a man. You would understand that Wallow 267 doesn't have anything to do with Wallow 266. You know what I'm saying? They're two different characters. And you know, it was like, it was, it was a really good thing, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, Gilly, he like this, you know what I mean? Stone faced it. I'm like, what's up, Gilly? You know what I'm saying? Nigga, you know what's going on. Gilly messed with one of my baby moms back in the day. So me and Gilly had a relationship because Gilly, I liked Gilly. Because when I was in, me and Gilly would talk on the phone. And he would always, man, you know, present himself as a good dude. So, you know, it never was a problem with them guys. Oh. My only thing with them is they understand how the world is now. You understand what I'm saying? So if they understand how the world is now, 
they know I'm coming for mine. So I'm not going to come in a violent way because they're good dudes. But what I am going to do is point out some things to them. And that's what it was all about. You know, letting them know that our city is in trouble. They're killing each other at a rapid pace. You have respect in the city. And you're quick with it. You're, you're, you're very mental. Help out. Help out. I have a responsibility. And that's to kill all the nut shit, man, in the minds of our people. So it would be great, man, if me and you would have had something like a presidential debate. That's what I'm drawing you into. You know what I'm saying? Because... You know how to think. I know how to think. We can give the people a different direction of thought. He said, but why you didn't call me now? I said, listen, let me tell you why I didn't call you. I said, it was this guy in prison, right, years ago. Everybody was afraid of this boy, right? He was going around knocking everybody out for years and years. I got a young boy from New York City, right? Loving the death, training one day, I'm laying back, everybody come to the cell. Now, the young boy, he had a little trouble with the boy that's hurting everybody, with homeboy. I said, yeah. I said, let me come down. My young boy know how to handle himself. I go down there. I said, what's the problem? The boy tell me, now he running his mouth, and, you know, I'm going to handle my business with him. I said, man, you can't handle your business with my young boy later. I said, listen, take him in the back room, do what you got to do to him. So my young boy said, all right. He go in the back room with him. Other dudes, they come back. They're like, no, it's not working. He afraid of the boy. Your young boy's afraid of the boy. I said, what? I said, all right, fuck. I come down. I said, yo, man, what's wrong with you bullying my young boy? He said, no, they not going to listen to you when it come to me. I said, nigga, I'll fuck you up. I said, I'll be the one to fuck you up. He said, let me see you try. I said, as soon as the police turn it back, they come up to my cell. Come right on up. I ran up to my cell. For five minutes, this dude was stretching, 200 people watching. He doing all this, everybody excited. Damn, this boy knocks everybody out. He's going up to Major Change cell. Oh my God, what is Major Change going to do? When all the police cleared out, the dude ran up the steps. Man, he was taking five and ten steps. Poof, poof, poof. I'm looking at him, I said, damn, is he really built like this? As soon as he come in the cell, you know what I did? I put the cell up the tower. I said, nigga, get the fuck back in the room. He steps to the back of the room. I said, damn, nigga, what's your problem? Bah! I start smacking him. We start fighting. Boom, boom, boom. See that he couldn't fight? I know I'm going home next year. You know what I did? I smacked him upside his head. I said, you know what, nigga? That's enough. Bah! Smacked him upside his head. Then I gave him a hug. I said, boom. I said, I love you. He said, I love you too. I let him out the cell. When he left out the cell, you ain't gonna believe what he did. The nigga start strutting. So now 300 men got the impression that he just fucked me up. I said, what the fuck? We know that. We was, uh, we was at uh, Fayette. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what? This is a bad situation because I can't go to everybody and tell them what really happened. So what I'm going to do. So you know, that's how he said that he had dealt with that situation. He was basically trying to challenge girl and them, you know, to a debate. And basically he was looking at it like they wasn't using their platforms and the power that they had in the city to stop the violence. Now, you know, these young boys, you know, the not, I can't even say these young boys, man, because every hood is out of control. It take a lot more than, than activism or, you know, giving speeches to, you know, try to stop a city from violence. Or every city, it, it goes up and down. You know what I'm saying? Like, even Chicago, like, Chicago had times where they was chilling. So the ones that got to really chill is the ones that's really in control of the parents, of the, you know, of the, of the younger generation. The older you are, they listen to you but so much, especially when it comes to like Gil and Wallow, because you can tell these young boys to stop shooting all day. If you're not putting no money in their pocket or putting them in a position where they don't got to come outside into the same environment every day, then it's really nothing that nobody could really say to these young boys, but let's get into, you know, what happens with, you know, major change when he got arrested. A self-described community activist from Southwest Philly is facing federal murder for hire charges after he been offered a FBI informant cash to kill a rival. Darnell Jackson, 
47, known as major changes behind bars awaiting a detention hearing, and if convicted, he could be sentenced up to a maximum of 20 years, and prison authorities say. He was arrested last Wednesday in the Elmwood neighborhood. For those of y'all that don't know, Elmwood, that's Southwest, uh, you know, area in Southwest. As he was driving to pay the informant who had just falsely told Jackson he had committed the murder, according to prosecutors, but Jackson had nowhere near the agree upon 5,500. Authorities said what he did have was a self-assembled ghost gun and 16 rounds of ammunition. It is no stretch of the imagination to conclude that the law enforcement thwarted multiple alleged attempt murders by the defendant last week. Acting U.S. Attorney Jennifer Arbiter Williams said in a statement two days before his arrest, Jackson sent a text message to a, the informant with a phone, excuse me, Jackson sent a text message to the informant with a photograph of the target and in a phone conversation told him he would have to pay, that he would be willing to pay to have this guy killed. According to the criminal complaint, then on Tuesday, July 20th, federal agents were listening as the pair spoke about a contract to have the man murdered, prosecutor said. During a bug in-person meeting on Wednesday, the informant asked for an advance and Jackson denied him the cash. He said loyalty over royalty, according to the complaint. He also alleged that the informant could shoot anyone who was with the target except children and a particular woman whose name was withheld in court documents. So, you know, basically what they saying is, you know, you can hit whoever he's around and how he was saying it was basically any of his homies or anybody besides a particular woman. He said, you know, don't no children or, or nothing like that. I know, I, you know, not trying to glorify it or nothing, but we know what's going on in these streets today where, you know, people will hit kids up and everything. They just don't care. Federal authorities said this thing was a part of an outgoing drug investigation. Recent searches conducted at several houses believed to be connected to a group led by Jackson turned up with fentanyl guns in the pill press, the complaint said. Neither the target of the alleged plot nor the informant was named in court orders, though the latter has been a reliable source of information for years, according to an FBI agent. Jackson is an anti-violence advocate and motivational speaker. His attorney, Nino Teneri, said under his name, major change nickname, Jackson has more than 13,000 followers on Instagram, where he would regularly do video posts. You know, um, he denies any of these allegations. And in my mind, I think he will win. You know what I'm saying? I think he'll beat this one because probably it comes to a determination by a jury. Tenero told Metro. Jackson has several prior convictions, all dating from the 1990s, including a 1997 case in which he was sentenced 7 to 15 years in prison for aggravated assault and voluntary manslaughter so with him having that you know crazy background you already know they going that they was going you know bring these things up in court even though i guess in certain situations they're not supposed to but if i'm not mistaken i think this was federal court he went in and from what i heard about the feds it's like you know they try to bring everything up bro you know what i'm saying